Now, we're going to shift gears a little bit here, but still focus on some pretty solid and great analysis. And if you look over here we at the screen, we have the Ord-Oracle.com. Now, every Tuesday and Thursday, we are joined uh, by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Uh, we've all come to love his analysis on it, and we're looking forward to hearing what he has to say today, especially in uh, the shadow of tomorrow with kind of the Fed decision. Tim, how are you doing? Good. Uh, first time learning curve here. We're on uh, Skype, so... Uh, That's right. We're doing a little transition. That's right. <laughs> right. So uh, I'm not real good at it, but I'll, I'll figure it out as we go forward. So. Totally. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's jump to it. You yeah, well, I got chart one. one up for whenever you are ready to go. All right. Well, anyhow, I, I got uh, on the chart, I have some uh, shaded uh, pink areas. And I only want to point out that is the shade pink areas, I have numbers on top of it. It says 10 days, 7 days, 7 days, whatever. Uh, actually, uh, those you get that many days up in a row. Anything seven and beyond, usually you're near some sort of a lease of consolidation, if not a reversal in the market. And that's the reason why I want to point this out. And actually, I have eight days up in a row going into today. That's not the case. Uh, it's actually seven days. And the market right now is just off a little bit. She'll be actually six days. But either way, we're up against some previous highs of, of July and actually August there. We actually touched a new high today, all time high. Yep. And uh, if you notice, you go down to the bottom window, uh, this this little indicator works really well, especially going into highs. Not so well at bottom. Sometimes it does okay, sometimes it doesn't. But on tops, most of the cases when the SPX or SPY in this case makes higher highs and the SPY VIX ratio makes lower highs, usually that's the divergence. And I got some red arrows on those charts showing times when the S&P's made higher highs, this ratio made lower highs. And nine out of ten times, you're going into some sort of at least a consolidation type high. Mm -hmm. And if you notice in the current time frame, you know, we, we broke above the August high. And that ratio, which is the bottom window again, made a lower high. And over the last couple of three days, the S&P's made a higher high and this ratio made a lower high. So on a short term basis and actually on a weekly basis, he got her to divergence. And so, again, we've been up, well, we're down right now, so it's six days in a row. When I made that chart, it was seven days in a row. So the FOMC meeting, and a lot of times you go into news announcements, you rally into them, a lot of times you decline out of them. Yeah. If you decline into them, you rally out of them. This particular case, it, it may hold up until Wednesday, maybe even Thursday, but we're probably going to at least see some uh, sort of a pullback so uh, i sold uh, i was long on the s and p's i think it was august 6th i got out last friday mm -hmm. and s so far I'm, I'm remaining out i don't see a good trade here set up especially with news setting right in front of us so let's, let's go to chart two yeah absolutely all right i'm pulling up chart two right now we should be good to go all right, so this is a monthly chart, and it looks at the, a little bit bigger picture. And we started to get uh, the bottom window is the SPX VIX ratio, which is similar to the SPY VIX ratio. But on a monthly chart, it seems to work a little bit better. But if you notice, you're going into June, July, the S&P's made higher highs, and this ratio made lower highs. And that's what predicted the market's probably going to in, in, enter into a uh, kind of summer, what I call the summer doldrums. Sure. And we're into it right now. And it's not over yet, too, because if you notice that ratio made a lower low and the S&Ps are still set close to its highs. So on a bigger time frame, we may actually pull back to the previous low of the last month, which is around that 5250 range, which uh, is just, a, you know, on a bigger time frame, it's just a small trading range before the market moves higher on a short term time range time range that, that's a pretty big pullback yeah and I, I don't know if we'll get to 52 or 50 or not but let's go to chart three a little bit sure kind of kind of just skipping back and forth yeah but anyhow the monthly chart suggests we could pull back to 5250 which is basically the last month's low which on this chart would be the august low um may go back there but 
this is a kind of a blown up chart of chart one, but I took all of the noise off. And you can see a little bit better what's going on. The top window is the SPI, SPY VIX ratio. And you can clearly see that ratio has made lower highs as the SPs made higher highs. And always, there's no accident in the market. If a market can't hold above its previous highs, it will reverse and, take, and attempt to take out the previous lows. Well, the previous lows is 540, which is basically the uh, uh, low of September uh, Roughly eight. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. Around that five forty. So I'm thinking on a short term basis, that's where we're going to head to. Um, probably by the end of the month. I don't know how this thing's going to work out. So, you know, the market volatility is probably going to pick up here pretty quick. Definitely going to the FOMC meeting because the good news is already in there. Are they going to cut a quarter point or a half point? I really don't know. Really don't care. Uh, but that's already baked into the market. And so the market's going to react to that. So right. and I think that, at a minimum, yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, you, and you bring up a great point as well, right? But the past few, you know, kind of releases we've had from the Fed, it was something the market anticipated, right? And so you have a little bit of movement up, like, prior to it, and then you see a little bit of a pullback as well. I think, too, and now I know we're looking at technicals on this, but if I could just, you know, interject some of the, you know, kind of general market news with it, you know, if this doesn't do you know, 50 basis points, right? And it's only 25. I think that volatility gets even higher as well. And, you know, I mean, seeing a pullback, you know, two five forty makes total sense, especially looking at, you know, the te technicals that we have right here. So. Yeah. Yeah. So at minimum, I think we're going to have four, 540. But on the monthly chart, you know, we, we could possibly see the August low. So I don't know. We may find, you know, support. Depends how the decline goes. You know, I'm a I'm, I'm big you know, fear in the market is, is actually a bullish sign. It depends yeah. how much fear we have on this next pullback. And I'll define the fear by the trend readings on the close. So we may see skyrocketing, you know, uh, trend readings, you know, 1.2 and higher on the pullback. If that happens, then probably the 540 will be support. But if the market kind of pulls back and that trend stays fairly neutral. I see. Then that, then that opens the door all the way down to, you know, on, on the SPY, but down to the 510 area. So, total. But wait and see. Hear the music. Yep, Tim, so. stay right there. Uh, folks, we'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle after a short break. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We are joined uh, by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Now, I want to say as well, you're taking a look over at TFNN a little bit earlier in the newsletters tab. Let's take a switch over here to services, right? And you hear Tim talk about bottoms and tops and everything like that. And it's kind of a question, you know, how do I sit there and read a chart and be able to kind of see those same things that Tim sees? Well, if you look over in the services tab, we have right down here, this is going to be the second row, uh, second and third column. We have the secret signs of market tops with Tim Ord, and then also six secret ratios every trader should know with Tim Ord. And uh, he talks about these, you know, everything included, <laughs> honestly, in these webinars uh, every time he's on the show. Uh, and it, it helps greatly to be able to understand and see these kind of indicators and then make informed uh, decisions, particularly around times uh, like this. So, Tim, before we went to the break, we were kind of looking at the spy charts, a potential pullback to 540, depending on the fear level at that. You know, we either find resistance or support, excuse me, at 540, uh, or we go down further to the August lows. Right. So, you know, the, the whole key is if this, you know, I'm saying, I don't know when this, I think this decline, this potential pullback, I'll put it this way, will start before the week is out. Uh, I don't know what to, you know, today is pre announcement you know that i think tomorrow they announce it at two o'clock eastern and so that probably gets some volatility in the market it may take a day for you know traders to think about it but probably before the weeks out i think the market will start to decline and again what's important on this you know it's a potential pullback if it does happen uh what the trend readings will be so that's how you define if that 540 is going to be a support area is how high that trend gets on a you know on a five day a ten day uh, or a three day depends you know how the big the how big that trend gets that will determine if that 540 will be support put it this way the ten day trend gets up around 1.2 or higher 
Now suggest that 540 will be support. I see. But if it stays close to around one, then that's kind of a no call. Uh, but most likely, we're probably going to go deeper until that trend does get above 1.2 or 1.2. Uh, the higher above, the higher above 1.2 it is, the more bullish that reading becomes. So the more fear in the market, the higher that reading will go. And the more fear of the market, the next strongest that actually puts energy to the next rally. So fear is a good thing. Everybody's afraid of fear. You really want to uh, uh, be a company to fear. Fear is a good thing in the market. If you don't have any fear, that's when you should fear because the market is <laughs> going to keep going down until fear develops. Right. So, uh, so anyhow, just want to push that no, in. No, fantastic. And, and, and again, like, guys, check out the webinars that Tim has because it goes so in-depth on it. And uh, honestly, it's it's pretty crazy how spot on this kind of stuff can be. So yeah, anyways, Tim, uh, do you want to move right. on here? We have, I think the yeah. gold is up next, huh? Yeah, gold is up next. This is kind of unusual uh, on, uh, uh, let's see, uh, September 9th. Okay, the, the second window down from the top is the uh, inflation deflation ratio on a daily basis. And the top window is the RSI for that ratio. And when the RSI of that ratio gets below 30, it's usually a, a bullish sign for the market. And all of those red lines across the chart show the times when the RSI of this ratio got below 30. And on September 9th, <coughs> let me get a drink here. On September 9th, the RSI got to 28.39. So that was the bottom, pretty much picked out the low. Uh, so it, it really, so anyhow, a minimum on, on when this, uh, indicator <coughs> triggers is usually at least a month of, of a signal. So sometimes it can be longer, but it's usually at least a month. So it's triggered on uh, September 9th. That would imply this rally should go at a minimum October 9th. So let's kind of look at the internal. So it actually, it's, it's, it's indicator or other indicators on the gold market are also on a monthly and uh uh, weekly buy signal. I didn't show those two indicators, but uh, this rally in general, uh, according to the monthly and weekly uh, chart, suggests this rally should last about a year and a half. The first, the weeklies were triggered back in March of 2000 or uh, 2024 this year, and the monthly is triggered in uh, May of the, this year. So, at minimum, we should go into late next year. Uh, but this. <coughs> Oh, my. <coughs> yes. I'm getting dry here, man. <laughs> no, it's just amazing to see. I mean, because you'd been calling some movement up as well in gold uh, for quite a while. If you take a look over here, I'm looking at my thinkorswim right now. But I mean, obviously, we all, we've all seen it, right? I mean, gold has just taken off recently. This has been a great year for gold. You had a little bit of stalling, you know, in the middle of the year, but, but really a nice march forward with some pretty strong movements up. So, I mean, this again has been, you know, just such a solid analysis as well from the right. beginning of this, so. Yeah, this, these are actually gold stocks. Uh, so I, I'm the GDX like itself, gold, right. Right, and, uh, and most of these gold stocks, you know, they've been dormant uh, or yep. lackluster for years. And I, I'm thinking these, all of these stocks are gonna come alive here. So all these penny stocks are going to turn into ten, twenty dollars at some point, probably over the next year or two. Well, and you've seen it happen too with like you know, for instance, I mean, Harmony went up. Now Harmony had some bad earnings, so it kind of came down. Forward guidance was strong, but I mean, Vista Gold, for instance, woke up a lot. Um, you're having some, yeah, a lot of movement in the GDX, I guess. Like you can see with the chart as well. But I mean, it's been fantastic for some of these as well. You know, yeah, I'm, like already. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking it is, it's going to get a lot better. Yeah. Uh, well, anyhow, let's, let's, let's take a look at the internals of the market, which is on uh, chart five. Perfect. Uh, the top window is a bullish percent index for the gold miners index. So this is another uh, gold miners index, another like ETF, like GDX, and looks inside of what those stocks are doing. And so it's a, it's a point and figure buy signal. In other words, the stocks in the gold miners index <coughs> right now 85 percent of them are on are on buy signals yeah so 
So that's over three quarters of the, but well, it's eighty-five percent. So almost all of the stocks in Gold Miners Index are on buy signals, point figure buy signals. And I mark the times in the past when this indicator is above sixty. <coughs> if you look, excuse me, if you look on the GDX chart, which is all that uh, kind of a shaded green area, yeah. is when those those rallies occur. So as long as that stays above point sixty. This area will stay in green. And that's what happens in major in the major rallies of of uh, GDX. Uh, the bullish percent index for the gold miners index stays above sixty, and this index still keeps going up. So this is kind of the, not even a topping area. Uh, so how long is this going to last? I think it's going to last again well into late next year. So I think we have a minimum of a year for this rally to happen or to keep going. You'll see some consolidations along the way, but in general, each consolidation will be a higher low than the previous low, and each high, higher will be above the previous high. Yeah. So, uh, and normally at the end of these moves, you get the parabolic move, and I think we're still a long ways from that. I hear the music. Yeah, Tim, stay right so, there. We have a short segment up next, but we still got a chart to go over, and I know we would all uh, love to hear uh, your thoughts on it. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle talking about. Uh, gold miners. Welcome back, everyone. Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. This is the Tom O'Brien Show on TFN, and we are joined uh, by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. We are looking at the gold miners, some potential movements for them going forward. We have a short segment here. Tim, we're looking at chart six right now. Indicator. The bottom window is the GDX up down volume percent, and the next window up is the GDX advanced decline, uh, but what works best uh, around studies in the past is the up-down volume. That pretty much dictates what direction GDX is going to go. And what this uh, is is a 50-day average of the up-down volume, so it measures the up and down volume and takes a 50-day average of it. As long as this indicator is above zero, uptrend in GDX is in force, and all that light colored uh, green area, shaded green area going to pass is when that indicator is above zero. And we started above zero about the first part of April. I mean, the bottom was in, in March. Uh, but it, it really, since it's a 50-day average, it lags a little bit. But we've been basically above April starting end of March, 1st of April. And we're still above zero. As of today, we're plus 10.94. <coughs> and so... If the market was kind of heading up, this indicator is close to zero or below zero, that would tell you, you know, the rally is ending and a, a pullback's beginning. But according to this chart, it's not even a pullback uh, setting up here because we're not even close to zero. We're actually even uh, increased here a little bit. Right. So on a short-term basis here, this indicator just looks fine. There's there's no hesitation. So I still think, uh, according to this chart, we're still going to move higher. It's probably going to look similar to that long period we had back in 2019 and 2000, first part of 2020, that pretty much this indicator stayed above zero for 16 months. So I'm thinking we're going to do something similar here. Fantastic. Tim, thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, of course, we're going to see you Thursday as well, so we hope you have a good rest of your day. Thank you.